And just look at it. It's still not working, but that's okay because in this episode we are doing the flywheel, the clutch, and the rear main seal because it's always a good idea. Chucking that manual in and hopefully getting it to actually move under its old power. So, couple up for the ride and let's get to it. So before we get to the point where this gearbox is the cleanest thing in this car, let's talk about how we can save you some money. Now before we start on installing the clutch on the Evo, let's talk about these four gearboxes in front of me because I can save you a lot of money and this is my top tip for you. So straight up, we've got the five-speed manual transmission for the Evo 7, 8 and 9. This on the marketplace right now will usually be worth around three grand Australian. Next door to it, we've got the Magna gearbox. 250 bucks, a thousand bucks will probably buy you the whole car. Now if you have a look at these, these are different, but you can actually unbolt this housing like this, unbolt this housing and slap this onto that, as long as you've got your Evo diff still. Which means you can make one of these, an Evo 5 speed gearbox for under a thousand bucks, which is pretty much unheard of. Now these are like impossible to find and if you are after one, please hit me up and I'll hook you up for cheap. But realistically, someone who's actually trying to make some money is going to try and sell this for about six grand. They are impossible and the only way to get them is probably importing them. Unless you know this trick. They are again the same. They even have the same code. These are both W5A51s. Same code, they're literally the only difference is the housings and again, the diffs. Now, because I did get this off the marketplace already out of the car, it makes sense to open this thing up and check the inside before putting it into the Evo. These are pretty simple to pull apart, just unscrew the bolts inside the bell housing and the outside of the gearbox. So whether it's Christmas day, you're opening up a present or taking off your girlfriend's pants, the exciting stuff is always inside and our gearbox is the same. This is the inner workings of our five speed and as you can see, it is in great condition actually. So if you have a look, we can see there's no metal pieces of teeth missing. There's uh, no bits of metal in here. It's all looking fantastic. The diff is in good condition. No wear on that really and the ring gear is also looking great. So pretty much this is going to be great. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to replace any bearings. It's just perfect to go. But that rear housing definitely wasn't something that has exploded spectacularly putting big chunks and cracking this housing quite bad. And now if you have a look inside here, someone has had to cut a hole to get that clutch or pressure plate out. So it makes a lot of sense to start with something a little bit better, which is what we had. It just had one crack and we welded that up. So that is ready to use. So the last thing we have to do is just prep this surface now with some thinners, put a little bit of silicon on it, slam it back down and then get ready to chuck on that car. Oh, I can't wait. So before putting this back together, I'm going to clean the end off this diff as it has been exposed while the gearbox has been out of the car. This is made easy with a can of degreaser and a bucket. Once I'm happy, I turn my focus onto swapping the bearing outer races from the gearbox housings. This way, I know that the outer races and the bearing angles are going to match and have the same amount of wear. I find heating up the gearbox housing makes this job a lot easier to pull out those outer races without causing any damage to the actual housing. And then putting the outer races in the freezer for 30 minutes makes dropping it in as easy as using lube in tight places. With very little effort, you can get it in. Once that's all done, I use a thin layer of silicon on both sides of the housing, which allows me to then screw them together to make a nice tight seal. I start installing the thrust bearing and the fork after using some anti-seize grease to make sure that everything's gonna move freely. One thing I did notice that the fork springs were actually installed wrong when I was pulling this apart. If you're doing this yourself, take the time to get this right. Once this gearbox is reinstalled, you can't get to this section again. Now, that's all done. It's time to date it and get out the degreaser, get the wire brush and clean the many years of dirt, grease and muck off this gearbox.
And this is the end result. And I have to say, it's looking pretty good, but I did go a little bit overboard cleaning this up. But, hey, we're building the Fast and Furious Evo here, so it has to be top notch. Now, before I stick this in, I just wanted to make sure they had all the right brackets. It looks like one might be wrong, and I'm still trying to figure that out. Bear with me on that one, but it's time to put this in after we do the clutch. So I'm using this dummy box to figure out what brackets I actually need for the GTA before installing the reconditioned box, which I'm super glad I did because it was a massive pain. Now something I really can't wrap my head around is why it's so hard to find information about doing this conversion. It doesn't matter if it was Mitsubishi Forms, General Internet, or just my local Mitsubishi dealer, they were all useless and I couldn't find solid information. So this is where I can save you guys some time. These are the documents for the EVO mounts and brackets for the manual transmission EVOs. And what I noticed is the automatic trans EVOs are a mixture of both, but just with one big difference, which I'll tackle in a later episode. So let's get back to the task at hand, getting this engine ready for the flywheel. Now we don't know the history of the EVO. So at this point, we don't know if this engine has ever been rebuilt or not. Which brings me to this, the rear main seal. My advice to you guys is, if you're ever doing a clutch replacement, replacing a torque converter or whatever, replacing your rear main seal is a smart move. Your future self will definitely thank you for it. And for around 50 bucks, you get some good peace of mind. But before picking this out, just make sure that's gonna fit. Now to put the rear main seal in is pretty straightforward. You just gotta prep that area, make sure it's good and clean and put a thin layer of lubricant around the crank and the inner circumference of the seal. You can start by pushing the seal in with your hands, but to get in straight easier, I would try to find something that is around the same shape to use as a guide to knock in so it goes in evenly. So now that's out of the way, it's time to feed your engine some bread because we need to get this piece of metal out of the way so we can bolt the flywheel onto the crank. Super straightforward, just keep feeding it bread and compressing it using a rod and hammer. Do this enough times and it will pop out, no worries at all. So the flywheel can only be bolted in one way. What I like to do is I like to line it up, put one of those bolts in it, so I know this thing is not gonna drop in my face while I'm preparing it. Unfortunately, you won't be able to use the same bolts you used for the flexi plate. You will need new ones, and I have gone for the ARP flywheel bolts. Now these come with grease and instructions, but you will need some Loctite 242 to make sure that when you're dropping gears, that your flywheel doesn't want to identify as a UFO and leave that bow housing in a spectacular way. As normal, you gotta time these things up in a star-like pan, and then torque them up to about 95 to 98 foot-pounds of torque in four steps. Then the last thing you gotta do is you gotta clean up the flywheel. I use degreaser, and the last thing I do is I use thinners on the face to make sure this thing is ready for the clutch. So now that that flywheel is all prepped, it's time to talk about clutches, and we have the clutch here for the Evo. This is an eight-putt clutch that is sprung. So what does the sprung mean? What does the puck mean? Okay, so these are the pucks, and there's eight of them, eight puck. Now the spring part, which is the sprung bit, that's super important if you want a car that's streetable. Okay, so like, let's for example, you're at the traffic lights and you want to take off. Having a sprung clutch is gonna ease on the engagement a little bit, which makes it really, really noticeable if you don't have one to if you do have one. So what happens is, this is connected to the gearbox, this is connected to the flywheel when your foot is off the clutch pedal, and when you do that, it's clamps here, and this will turn a little bit. I mean, it's only a little bit, but it makes a huge difference in actually engaging and being nice and smooth. I have both. I've used this clutch on uh, one of my cars, and I had it for years. Great daily driver, never had any issue with power, didn't slip, I mean, you could really try and you would not slip that clutch, but it was great to engage. I've got a loud one, which has a clutch like this, and it is a torture to drive on the road. It's, it takes a lot of the fun out of the car, sadly, um, but it's 
it's just that's what you want. If you need something that can handle a lot more torque, power, sometimes you need to sacrifice a little bit of drivability. We're not gonna have that problem with this car because we're only going up to a certain amount of horsepower and this clutch is definitely gonna be fine with that. We shouldn't have any issues at all. So, another thing we need to talk about is these are one-sided. As you can see, one bit is raised, one bit is flat. The raised bit usually goes and faces the gearbox. The flat side usually faces the flywheel. If you get it wrong, you're gonna have problems. You're probably gonna have to pull your whole gearbox out again. Not fun. But pretty much this is ready to go. We don't have to clean it. We can just slap this straight in. So let's do that right now. So after prepping the pressure plate by cleaning it with a bit of thinness, I hopped back underneath the car again to get friendly with the concrete and put this clutch into place. Now this kit did come with an alignment tool which made my life just that little bit easier. Once you got that pressure plate pretty much on the flywheel pins, then you can bolt it into place and take the alignment tool out and finish it off by torquing the bolts up to about 15 to 21 newton meters. Make sure you do it in a star-like pattern. So we're going to sidetrack for a second and modify this particular mount. I will go into this more in depth in a later video, but pretty much what I'm doing is I'm replacing the rubber with a poly insert as it was damaged and it needed to be done. And I definitely want to do this before I put the gearbox in because the gearbox was not an easy task to put back in. And let me be clear, I am really not exaggerating. It took me six plus hours to get this in by myself. So here are some helpful hints for you guys. Step one, strap that transfer case out of the way. It has a bad habit of getting right where you don't want it, when you don't want it. Two, get that engine mount on an engine crane and remove the front engine mount. Once I did this, I was actually able to get the gearbox in. Before I realized this, I had no hope. Three, get a strong mate. Just an extra pair of hands would have been nice, but the stronger the better. Four, find your happy place. I was exhausted after this because that rear bracket, I had to feed the gearbox in in a 45 degree angle and then line up the input shaft at the same time with the clutch. In other words, it was being an absolute right. But if you keep going at it, you will eventually get it in. Just make sure you slap in some bolts in that bow housing before it comes apart. Trust me, you'll thank me later for that one. Next, you wanna get the bolt into the rear mount first. It's the hardest mount to do, so we do it first. Followed by the engine mount that's on the left, and also the front mount under the car. Till your left with the right-handed mount. And this is where Mitsubishi did something extremely odd. The GTA bracket that's on the actual body is different to the manual Evos. As you can see by these examples. Now there's definitely a couple of options we can do to make this work, but I'm gonna leave it for another episode as I really wanna focus on this. Seems this seems to be a big question on the internet. And there you go, another step closer to getting this thing done. So there's still a fair bit to do. We gotta do the CVs, run the cables, figure out how to fix this engine mount here, and do the wiring as well, just to get this gearbox working. But we're doing a lot of other things to this car because we are building the Too Fast, Too Furious Evo 7. So if you want to come along and watch that, please subscribe, please like, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.